Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It is the middle of December, and it's definitely winter here. Um, my mom always looks forward to this time of year because soon the days will start getting longer. And I don't know about where you live, but where I live, um, the days can get quite short. Um, there's a time in December when the sun comes up around maybe quarter to nine, nine o'clock in the morning, and it sets around four in the afternoon. <clears throat> so we don't get a lot of sunlight. But by January, um, for sure the days start to feel longer. You notice the days, um, maybe we have sun until quarter to five, five o'clock. <laughs> and you learn to be grateful uh, for the change in the season and the change in the, in the sun. Uh, but that's not to say we can't be grateful for these dark evenings where we can be cozy at home with friends and family or with our crafts um, or with our loved ones and our pets. My pet is currently hiding right here, right underneath this desk. Um, it's where he likes to hide while I'm working, which is really sweet because he keeps my feet warm. Um, what have you been up to? I've been knitting gifts. Um, this is a time of year when I knit gifts and maybe some of you do too. And I'd like to share some of those with you. In fact, almost everything I have knit is a gift and I don't have that much um, other knitting to share with you, but I do have some plans. So I thought we could maybe talk about those soon. Um, let's just start with something small. You know that I've been participating in the year of dishcloths. And I just finished the December one. This one is based on Little Women. It's called Marmy, um, which is what the girls call their mom. Okay, fun fact, I read Little Women when I was quite young. In fact, I read it many times. In my school library, um, back when we had little library cards, my name was on uh, that card many, many, many times. I don't know if anyone else took out that book. It was just mostly me. Um, and when you're a kid, you don't really understand the context of, uh, of a book like where it fits in history. Um, and so it wasn't until I was older when I really understood some of the background of, of what was happening outside of little women and their home. So the, you live and you learn. Anyway, this is Marmy. It is, I knit it on uh, some yarn that didn't have a ball band, but I'm pretty sure it's some Barnett Handicrafter cotton. Uh, and it has this really pretty braided pattern. And it is the last in this year of dishcloths. In fact, I was going to show you all my dishcloths. I'm going to do that right now. Hang on. Honestly, you think I'd remember these things. Anyway, I have completed a whole year of dishcloths. And so I thought because I don't have a ton of things to show you, I would show you my year of dishcloths. I might have the months wrong, but just let's just pretend I'm right. This is, I think, January. <laughs> February. Oh, with the little hearts. This is like a little uh, a little throwback episode. That's so nice. Uh, March had this pretty little lace pattern around the outside. April, I think goes like this. It's a very springy yarn I chose. Actually, it's good that I'm getting these out because now I can give them away to my friends and my family. May, June, July. I remember I chose a Canada Day one for this one. <laughs> um, let's see. August. This one reminds me of raindrops. September. I don't know, maybe that was... Oh, I don't know. I think I've lost track. August, September. Maybe I'm missing one. Anyway, these are the ones that I could find and can show you. Uh, that I have completed a whole month, a whole year of dishcloths. Um, and actually it was really fun on the first of every month to get a new pattern in my mailbox. Um, in other years I've done other things like um, putting away sock yarn to knit myself a sock, a pair of socks every month and be surprised with what yarn I tucked away. Um, this year was dishcloths. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next year, but I'll let you know. Um, it's just sort of a fun little gift for myself. This was an easy one because I had lots of dishcloth cotton and that's easy to come by. Um, I think this year's monthly knit will probably be something inspired by my stash, I hope. Um, but I'll let you know. I'll let you know when I know. 
Um, but so yeah, that's my first thing off my needles is a little dishcloth, which I always think of as a little amuse-bouche. <laughs> it doesn't take very long to knit a dishcloth, but it's fun trying new patterns and different stitches. Um, the only thing with dishcloths is that um, I always knit them in cotton. Oh, actually, there might be one somewhere that I knit with linen. This one, I think. No, no, that's still cotton. Um, but dishcloths can be, or knitting with cotton, especially at a tighter, firmer gauge, can be kind of hard on your hands because cotton, as with many plant fibers, is not very stretchy. It doesn't have the same give that wool does. Um, so depending on the stitch pattern can be a little harder on your hands, which is probably good that they're just a small little pattern. Uh, I have a couple more gifts off my needles um, and they'll look very similar to you. <laughs> First is a pair of bear paw socks for my older daughter. I think I had started these um, the last time, but I just used leftovers from my pair of bear paws that I knit for the Andre Mary knit along. And I'll just pop a picture in here. So I flipped the colors, the contrast in the main, and I knit these ones quite a bit shorter. Uh, Andre Mary asks you to knit a seven inch um, cuff or foot from the bottom of the heel before you do these stripes and I really just didn't have the yarn for that and I don't know that my daughters would enjoy such a long sock. So um, I knit these out of the leftovers which was great. I really enjoy um, using up what I have and not having much left over. So those are bare paws for my older daughter and mostly because she said she liked the colors when I was knitting mine. Uh, then when my younger daughter found out I was knitting some socks for her sister, she asked if she could have some too, um, and she chose some yarn from my stash. This is, I'm just gonna chat with you while I <laughs> prepare my sock blockers. Um, this is some Exmoor uh, sock, but it's a sock yarn by John Arbin, and it's a much more rustic yarn, um, but it's hard wearing, and I really like the colors that it comes in. Um, Exmoor sock comes in a 50 gram ball, and so two 50 gram balls was just the right amount a pair of socks for my other daughter. She chose the colors and these didn't surprise me. I had a couple of blues in my stash. Uh, and yeah, and they look really great together. Um, this lighter blue here on the toe is called Mackerel Sky. And this deeper teal is called Dimity, I think. Um, uh, I got a little bit of extra yarn um, so I can make these legs a little longer. In fact, I have some left over, so I probably could have made them a little longer, but I didn't want them to be too terribly different from her sisters. So it's another pair of bear paws off the needles. This sock uh, pattern, once you've knit one, um, it's really easy to just um, keep knitting them. And uh, I think that I'll be trying Andrea Mowry's Everyday, DRK Everyday sock pattern, which is the same, same, uh, general idea but knit in fingering weight. I really like the um I really like the ribbing and I like the heel on it. This is called a flegal heel. So these socks are knit toe up. You can still see my stitch marker. Um, they're knit toe up and you get to a certain point. For me it was right here and you start doing some decreases and then once you get to the end you uh, do what is called a flegal heel. So it this is um short rows that go back and forth which may look similar to you if you've ever knit a top-down sock with a heel flap and gusset. Uh, often they look like this, right? With the heel flap being here, a gusset being sort of here, uh, and then a little um, sort of short row section to, for the rounded bit of the heel. Um, so this is a really interesting construction for me and I really enjoyed making socks this way. And I think I might try that fingering weight pattern in the future, but I have to say, um, living where I live, <laughs> um, it was really fun to make some cozy DK socks that we can wear around the house, um, especially um, this time of year and over the Christmas holidays, um, so we can be cozy at home. My older daughter just had, um, two weeks ago, had her ACL repaired. She had a soccer injury, sadly, um, so she had to have surgery a couple weeks ago, uh, which means that we won't be doing any skiing <laughs> this year, um, as a family anyway, um, just because she uh, will take some time to recuperate. She's doing great. She's uh, thrown away the brace and the crutches. She's hobbling around, um, 
but doing well and getting better every day. And she starts some physio next week. So we're, um, we're optimistic that she will make a great recovery. Um, it's just going to take some time, which means no skiing for right now. But that does mean that staying home and being cozy with some cozy socks sounds like a great idea. And I have one last gift off the needles. This was a big one. Um, big in terms of size, big in terms of amount of knitting, big in terms of um, some of the techniques and skills and things that I had to do to finish this sweater, but it is done. And it is my dad's spice sweater. Here it is. It actually looks like, I'm gonna get up so you can see the whole thing. Ta-da! There it is. Yay. I will, uh, I will insert some pictures here too. This was uh, a labor of love, um, obviously, because it's for my dad. But um, there's a lot of things in this sweater that I forgot about that can that are not fiddly, but are time consuming and, and need um, sort of time and space and thought to get right. So um, for me, that was working through the different colors of. Um, spin cycle dream state that I had on hand to create sort of an ombre effect. So that required a bit of thought and a bit of planning, but I think it turned out pretty well. And there's the body. Um, there were some afterthought pockets, if you recall. So um, those involved picking up some stitches here and knitting this ribbing for the top of the pocket, and then picking up on the inside these stitches and knitting a flap and then sewing those down to the inside of the sweater to make the pocket. This sweater was steaked, so I had to do some crochet. Let's see how my inside looks. Let's give you all the dirty details. I did a crochet um, stabilizer, sort of a crochet, what do we call that? Um, steak. So uh, I used, and I, I use and highly recommend Kate Davis's um, tutorials on how to crochet. Um, I guess it's, it's not really a stabilizer, it just gives some, yeah, it is kind of a stabilizer. It gives the st stitches that you're about to cut some um, sense of um, stability, so they're not gonna stretch out like this. So as soon as you cut those stitches, they stay where you left them. And the crochet, in fact, kind of curls under and takes the edges with them. So you don't end up with a lot of yarn ends, um, but you do have to um, sew that down. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Um, I use this bright blue yarn to do my crochet, steek. Um, and then I use some of the original, some of this yarn to just whip stitch it down. And I think I did a pretty good job. I didn't have very many little tails or ends sticking out. Um, and it does give a little, a little bit of bulk right at that, right here, right next to where the button band is. Um, but that's okay. I think it gives it some like, I think that will mean it will sit nicely because you've got that little bit of extra fabric right there in the front. Um, I think on the other side, yeah, on the other side, I had a few more little yarn ends that were escaping, but I just captured them with the yarn that I was using to um, whip stitch it down. And I think it turned out okay. I did uh, a I did a buttonhole from um, Patty Lyon's Knitting Bag of Tricks, which I think I told you about. And I think those turned out really nicely. But quite a, quite, quite a, um, I don't know, quite a nice looking buttonhole without any little holes happening at either end. So that's nice. And I chose some buttons. Uh, let me see where are the buttons. Uh, I chose some really deep sort of almost coffee colored buttons um, because this is for my dad and he's not a super showy kind of guy. So I thought maybe just some dark buttons. I didn't want to distract from everything else that was going on in this sweater because the color I think is enough. <laughs> um, and that will be uh, sufficient to I didn't want to have another another sort of flashy element for this sweater for my dad. So I just chose this nice, deep brown color. The uh, shawl collar 
which is a lot of fabric. Uh, do not forget when you're knitting a shawl color, it's more fabric than you think. Um, but um, I think it's very clever to use an I-cord bind off because it gives some uh, weight and also stability to the edge of the shawl collar right here. So that when you block it in place and kind of fold it and it sits nicely, um, the edge of the shawl collar doesn't stretch out. So that's a really nice detail, something that you do have to take your time with, um, but it really, I think, adds to this sweater. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to add a little tag. Um, I have some little uh, faux leather tags that I like to put on my knitting and I'm trying to decide where to put them. It's either gonna go on the bottom of the sweater down here someplace, or I might just tuck it in on right here, like on the on one of the pockets. I'll let you know. You will see pictures of it. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is something I'm really pleased with. I think it turned out really well and I hope my dad will like it a lot. Um, I'll take some pictures of him wearing it so that you can see. <laughs> Um, hopefully it looks uh, as good on him as I hope and I hope that he enjoys it. Um, I know that he, he does get cold, he feels the cold more than he used to, especially after having um, gone through chemotherapy for cancer and come out the other side much the better. Um, yeah, so that is the biggest gift and it's all done and ready to go. And that's it. I've been working on some Advent socks, uh, but I don't wanna share them with you because I don't wanna ruin the surprise for you if you're knitting your own Advent socks. Uh, so I'll just keep those a secret for now. And I'll share those with you um, after Christmas when we've all finished our, hopefully finished our Advent socks uh, and have something to, to share and to wear um, in those cozy days between Christmas and New Year's. Now that I've finished all my gift knitting, um, I'm sort of at a loss as to what to knit next. I often have um, plans and things and the next project, the next project all lined up, but I've been really concentrating on finishing some gifts. And now that those are done, um, I'm ready for a little breather. I'm actually ready to try something different. So I think that my, the next thing I grab for is going to be some embroidery or some cross stitch. Um, I'm looking forward to a change of pace and slowing down and trying something different uh, for a little while. Um, so I think I'm going to have a look in my stash at some of the cross stitch or embroidery um, kits that I have lying around. And the other thing I'd like to do is to wind up some yarn to make something very comforting and cozy. So the yarn I'd like to use is this Longway Homestead. It's a Targi DK yarn and uh, it is somewhat rustic. I mean, there's little bits of vegetable matter here but it's really soft and lofty and a really lovely natural color and so i think what i'm going to be doing is knitting a sophie shawl you saw me knit a bunch of sophie scarfs uh, as christmas gifts and they were all very well received um, gratefully the ones that i've given away so far um, but they're such a relaxing knit it's garter stitch an eye cord edging with some increases and decreases. And I think that that sounds really nice for this time of year as I think and plan as to what I wanna knit next. So I think um, now that I've finished and I can slow down my crafting, I think I'm gonna be winding up this yarn to knit something nice and relaxing. Um, I'm looking forward to a change of pace actually while I plan what's next for my knitting. Uh, do you ever do that? Do you do you uh, like to clear your palette and try something different just to just to give your mind something different to try? I am looking forward to doing something with my hands and to create something different. Um, cross stitch right now sounds really nice. This is a time of year where uh, my family tends to slow down. We the girls will be off school for a couple weeks and my husband and I usually take that time off. We're lucky enough to be able to do so. And um, it's a nice time for us to take our time, take a breath, uh, sleep in, watch movies, relax, um, and sort of clear the air and reset ourselves for the new year. Um, so we'll be, we'll be busy at home with soccer and volleyball and physio appointments and, and hopefully visiting friends and family. Um, but I also look forward to just slowing down 
and uh, taking my time with things and appreciating um, the peace and slowness of this time of year, or this time of year can have anyway. Uh, once all of the um, the holiday hubbub, uh, if, if you celebrate holidays, uh, once that's over, it's nice to just take a breath and to relax and to rest. I hope that you find time to celebrate if you celebrate anything this time of year, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, um, solstice, Christmas, um, or just being with friends and family. I hope that you find time to uh, celebrate yourself too. Um, not everyone has large groups of friends and family to get together with. This is a wonderful time of year to uh, stay home and be cozy and to um, enjoy um, some peace and some solitude and some personal renewal um, as a time to start again in the new year. So I hope that you find time for yourself and I hope that you find time to do the things that you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a little and resting a lot. I'll see you after Christmas um, with hopefully some plans for the new year. Um, I hope that you find time for yourself and for your uh, craft and for the making of your hands. And I'll see you soon. Bye.